So you may have heard of the fraud triangle. Uh, and according to the fraud triangle, we need three conditions for a fraud to be perpetrated. First, we need some kind of an incentive, some reason to commit the fraud. And that could just be, you know, I'm behind on my mortgage, I'm greedy, uh, I'm bored, and I just want a, uh, a challenge. You know, whatever it happens to be, uh, I have some kind of a reason that I want to steal money or take the system down or, you know, change Bob's salary or whatever. I have some kind of a reason to do that. Next, I have to find some opportunity, some way to do that, some way to uh, commit that fraud that works for me. And then I have to rationalize it. And here's where ethics come into play, uh, personal morals, etc. I have to figure out how I'm going to justify committing the fraud. Oh, well, you know, uh, I'm late on my mortgage. I'll pay it back next month when I get my paycheck. So, yeah, this is just a you know, short-term thing. Nobody gets hurt. Uh, often that doesn't work out that way, and the money never makes its way back, unfortunately. You know, I may, and, and here, again, if I'm um, more of an amoral person, I don't really have any morals, I may just say, eh, it looks like fun. The International Pro uh, Professional Practices Framework defines fraud as any illegal act characterized by deceit, concealment, violation of trust. These acts are not dependent upon the threat of violence or physical force. Okay? And then you've got statement of uh, auditing standards, uh, also talks about management and their responsibilities for establishing, monitoring, uh, fraud risk assessment, fraud prevention activities, and so forth. So management, when it boils down to it, is responsible for a company's fraud profile.